What's up? It's your boy Rick Hyde, Big BSF. And if I'm not at Native Hype Mart, I'm right here at Shaman 2, 1046 Bloomingdale Road. Pull up. Ricky! Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Mic check, mic check. That's a new thing that I've never done before. We did a mic check like Daz Effects. Welcome to Moneyball, everybody. I have with me Pro Baller. I have Troy Banks. Uh, Troy, I'm excited to have him and I have been trying to link up for a little bit. And with some, you know, scheduling and communication breakdowns, we haven't done so yet. But here he is. Uh, great to have you on, man. Hey, thanks for having me. It's, it's an honor to be on. You've been killing it, man. Seriously, I've been seeing it. And uh, it's good stuff. Well, I appreciate that. And that means a lot. It really does. Um, I'd like to think, you know, that you put the work in and it starts paying off. And nobody would know that more than someone who is a pro baseball player. Um, the the blood, sweat, tears and the grind, man. Tell me a little bit yeah. about let's rewind right back to the beginning when you started playing ball all the way up to where you're at right now. Holy smokes, man. <clears throat> Three years old for the Yankees at Orchard Park Little League. <laughs> Never forget it. That was my favorite team. They put me right on that team. And uh I have vivid memories of my first really? year. Yeah. From three years old? From like f four years old, three, yeah. four years old. My, yeah. my mom took pictures and used to date them. Okay. So I have uh, a vivid memory of turning an unassisted triple play in my first year ever. <laughs> and I remember like kids looking around like, what's he doing? Dude, so you're growing up in Orchard Park, New York, represent, you're doing the T-ball thing. Six, seven, eight, when you start to explore and play different sports. Yes. Was there any question it, it was going to be baseball or was that? Absolutely. I was a big hockey player growing up. Okay. Loved it. I remember talking to my parents. I don't know which one I love more. And I did have dreams of going to play in the OHL and okay. doing that route. I played AAA for the Buffalo Saints. So like, it wasn't like I was a slouch. Okay. okay. But uh, was it the I, Saints at the time or Buffalo? Yes, it was. Yeah. I made it to AAA with the Saints, and we, we that was about the time where we were going to Canada and playing in tournaments and kind of realizing, okay, these kids are yeah. filthy. Yeah. Maybe I'm not going to go to the OHL. And that was the most fun I've ever had playing hockey. Yeah. The school coming out to watch you play, like filling leisure ranks, it, was, it yeah. was good stuff. Yeah, and having that camaraderie. I mean, nothing, nothing beats it when you're in that element, right? So oh, the whole dude. time, were you playing hockey the whole – or I'm sorry, baseball the whole time? The whole time, yeah. I never took a year off of ball as long as I've started. Okay. Uh, so, again, I, I didn't know which one I liked more. But I was always, not looking back, I was always better at baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just was. Just more natural talent. And what position have you played most of your career? Shortstop. Uh, so you've always been short? Second? Did you? Well, I, they actually stuck me at second for a long time in travel ball because I wasn't the biggest guy. Okay. I was actually probably the smallest guy. Okay. Um, and that, I don't know, I, I've always wanted to play short. So high school came around, I, I played a lot of shortstop. And then I got, to, I mean, I don't want to fast forward too quickly, but then I got to college and they threw me at second base and that was it. Yeah. And to give it a long story short, my college coach said, honestly, I, I don't see you playing shortstop at the next level. You're a great second baseman, stay there. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I love second. I'm great at second. But as soon as I got the pro ball, they threw me at shortstop. And you were happy. I didn't complain. Felt more at home, right? Yeah. I mean, the there's few places in the world, and this is crazy to a lot of people, that feel like home. Yeah. But being out at short or second or yeah. third is home. Yeah. It That's, just makes sense. That, like, for anyone who doesn't really know, I'm going to ask you this, man, because for the baseball fan, they hear like, well, move third, move that guy over to second. Guys playing first, move him over to short. No one understands how different the positions are. Give no. me, in your words, the breakdown of, of how different they are. Like, what would be a good analogy, right? So you say there's a shooting guard in basketball and a point guard, and but yeah. they kind of play both. It's just a size thing. What do you think are the biggest differences and the biggest, uh, I guess, maybe misnomers about the positions in baseball? Yeah, so uh, jobs. I mean, the jobs that you have are different. Um, baseball is a game where you have to know exactly what you're doing before the ball even comes to you. It's a lot of prediction, Yeah. right? In my mind, every pitch is its own game. So, like, when the, when the pitcher gets the ball back, okay, now I just take a deep breath, go back into it. So, basically, it's it's – it's a whole level of focus in a different way. So if I'm playing shortstop, I know I have to be okay 
over here to my right if this ball gets hit that way. Yeah. Second base, I have to be at first base in a bunt. There's right. there's it's a lot, it's very different. And if you think about a righty being up to the plate, right? And I'm at second base, my pre pitch uh readiness is geared towards him hitting it to me, and that's a different part of his swing. Mm-hmm. Now it's coming to me. Now I'm at shortstop. It's totally different. Yep. He has more time to get around on it. So I have to play it a little bit differently. It's just, it's, it's, it goes really deep, but the more that you're out there, the more it makes sense, man. You know, not taking anything away from any athletes in, in any sport around the world, anything, as far as cerebral, you know, baseball, you just need to be there, man. The brain needs to be on point. It's just a step above anything else. I mean, and listen, man, I love all sports. I got nothing but respect for every athlete I've ever interviewed and for every sport I've ever played, but going up and shooting a basketball, uh, you can get good at it by practice and repetition and you keep shooting. Yeah. Football, a lot of it is a natural gift. You know, you're an athlete, you're, you're six, five, 280, right. And you're shredded with baseball. They come in all shapes and sizes. And, you know, I've heard people say they're not real athletes. You you need to know what you're doing. Yes. yes. And that's a great point you bring up because a lot of the other sports, virtually every other sport, is very action, action, action. And the way the world is going with our phones, watching the UFC fights and the March Madness and football, Super Bowl, yep. it's very fast-paced. Yep. So... Y- I can see why some people would be like, oh, like he's he's not an athlete. He just runs to first base. But it's if you really start to understand the game, it's a whole new level of meaning to a, a sport. And it's incredible in my eyes. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. And, and there is a reason, you know, that it's the national pastime and that it's it's stayed and been successful for so many years there. There was a little a little time lapse. I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, where it was just a dying sport i mean they couldn't yeah. it wasn't a race thing it wasn't this that they just couldn't get anyone to go out and play and that was the big big hit on it was it just it, there was no action yeah they've done some things recently to speed the game up that i personally love i wanted yeah. your take on it you know because you might be more of a traditionalist you're a pro ball player i'm a pro fan you know so for me watching the games when this rule first went into effect man it was unbelievable i would like First inning, you're getting into your seat, you're relaxing. You know, we've been to every stadium in the country, bro, me and my family. Really? Oh, yeah. That's dude. awesome. Yeah, we're crazy with baseball. And, you know, you go and you get in your seat and you want to get your hot dog or your nachos or whatever, and inning's over. It's just that that kind of, you know, that, yeah, but it's great. It is. It it's is. captivating. You can stay focused on the game. You know, the throwing back to first 20 times, you know what I mean? It was like they were taking advantage of it, get people, you know, getting people ready in the bullpen and stuff like that. And it just, it's yeah. Like, it took all that out of it. And do you like the rule changes? A hundred percent. Good. It's like guidelines now. It's it's good because you a pitcher could sit on the mound all day and throw over a thousand times in the old days. Yeah. Like what like that does nothing for the fans and 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 even the players, man. You know what I mean? Let's get this game going. Where is that's, that's I love the pitch clock and all that. I don't even need to step on the box. It doesn't matter. Right. You'll stay right in it. Yeah, man. Like, I had I, you know, I have starting the show too, and talking to guys like you and, and, you know, everyone from Johnny Damon, you know, right down to Troy Banks, man, I just have a newfound respect for the everyday life of a ball player. Now, again, yeah. I'll in reference every sport I know is different, right? But yeah, slower, being a slower paced sport. Also, it's a lifestyle. So like you're in that uniform, pretty much you get up in the morning, right? Say you're taking BP at, at, at 10 30, 11. For maybe a one o'clock game, yeah, the game ends at four. By the time you get that uniform off, it might be six o'clock at night, you know. And no, later, maybe. Later. Like, okay, yeah. one o'clock. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's what I mean. It's it's an all day thing, and that's so many games. It's basically every day for 162 days, 190 days, right? Crazy. You're signing autographs. You're playing that role. You're being this person that that fans have an expectation for and i've always yeah. felt um two ways there's the fan way to look at it which is like hey this guy's getting millions of dollars because of me and we're going to pay and watch and now that i've started really getting more involved with the athletes man i i see your guys sign of it more and it's like yeah it's tough and people's oh they make all this money man it doesn't matter bs like you're still a human being and like what so one day you don't feel like signing and doing something all of a sudden you're the biggest jerk off in the world because you didn't sign something for somebody or you didn't wave to a kid because you're in a bad mood that day, you know? 
Yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. And there's a few good points I'm going to make here. Uh, one of them being a lot of times you go to games, uh, whether that be a minor league game, a spring training game, a big league game, whatever. And you're like, you look out to the field and you're like, those guys are living the dream. Right. Stress free. Look at those guys. But in reality, dude, it is not even close to that. Right. Right. You are fighting for a spot. Right. Every pitch. You, you, I used to go to Bison's games to play so for nice. the day. And I used to look out in the field and be like, I, this is incredible. These guys play baseball for a living. But when you get to that level, you want to stay there. Right. And you're a few, you know. Well, like, actually, no. Strike that, right? You don't want to stay there as far as the Bison's. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know exactly what you're saying. You want to stay there and not go backwards. The guys that, are, that get stuck with the Bison's and they're frozen in time, right? Yep. Like they might feel like they never made it. Yes, that's you're still true. a pro. You're still a pro ball player, right? Hundred percent. And every and this is the question: is all this time? When is it enough? Uh, you could get to the minor leagues and be good, but now, okay, now you want to move up. You can get to the big leagues, but now you want to be a Hall of Famer. It never ever yeah. stops, man. That's a great point. I love the fact that you just said that. It's it's you could be the Hall of Famer and then you want to be a commentator. You're so right, man. And that's just us as human beings, right? Like take yeah. the game out of it. It's never enough. If you get a promotion, <clears throat> you know, you start living your life different. You're in, exactly. In, you know, you're spending your money different, and then you want to know, hey, how can I make more? What can I do to make more money? We're just creatures of of attrition maybe because that's not habit yeah. we're just certain people right with that drive yeah me same personality we just it's that drive to constantly strive and want more and it can almost absolutely be amazing, right yeah so we spun off there a little bit but i'm glad we did man because that was some awesome feedback on your end we did spin out a little bit but where i guess you know i obviously i followed you at mercyhurst i saw your numbers which were which were kick kick a here and you know high school right you're playing for op um what year was this this is the 2017 was my senior year. Okay, so 2017. Now, what happens as a player who has aspirations, who obviously has talent, people have come out and seen you and watched you, and you're kind of a big deal in Orchard Park, right? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, this kid's got potential. Yeah. What's going on in your head, and, and what are the moves? Like, what go, is it like, hey, man, I got to go get an agent? Do I talk to my parents? Well, take me through that process a little bit. Spend a few minutes and tell me what goes on. So. I don't know if you know the name Dave Hollins. Uh, yeah, of course. Philadelphia yeah. Phillies, third baseman. Yeah, so he had a son. His name is Bubba. Really good friend of mine. Okay. Bubba was a senior when I was a freshman. And okay. Bubba got drafted to the Detroit Tigers. I'll never forget it. It was a big deal. And I was like, um, I, I was on JV my freshman year. And I was the first JV guy in Orange Park history to hit for the cycle. Like, I was a freshman yeah, on awesome. the big field. And I'm a little guy. Like, going deep on the big field so i they pulled me up for uh the playoffs in varsity and bubble was the starting shortstop right on and i was his backup for the, for the playoffs yeah yeah so it was really cool to kind of see okay this kid's about to get drafted was he was he drafted at that point he, he was drafted come playoff time so yeah before we started okay, yeah which is just was insane to me i mean just right? you even playing behind him and knowing that this guy was drafted by the tigers right yeah. And shout out Bubba, but I'm going to say something here. Coach, uh, one of our coaches was like, he, he, he would come up to me and say, you got to keep working hard, man. Like, I, I really do think that you could, you're going to be better than Bubba. So if Bubba got drafted, I'm going to get freaking drafted. Right, and right. this is going to be a great life. Fast forward to my senior year. I was one of the top players in the area. Another one was Josh Sherwick. Uh, he played for Will North. LG Castillo was in Lancaster. So. I, I knew I was one of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got drafted to the Brewers. Yeah. That year. So I grew up playing with these guys. Right, right, right. I knew how good I was. Yeah. But I've also, I've honestly, I'll, I have humility in this, but I, I, I know that a big reason I didn't get picked up was because of my size. I wasn't that 6'5 prototype shortstop. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And, and so, you knew that, go, like, yeah, go ahead. And maybe I didn't. You know what I mean? I, I can only say that now. I was very immature as a senior in high school. Okay. So which is how back, you're saying, but you at the time you didn't think that was gonna hold you back at all? No, no. I thought I was at least gonna go late in the late rounds. Okay. I didn't have the best season my senior year. I think I had I was a stud my sophomore year. Yeah. We went to states, junior year a little bit worse, senior year a little bit worse. What do you attribute? Now that was be 
yeah, that was because of the crazy uh, things that I was putting in my mind of who I thought I was. But that's fine. So I expected to get drafted and all that stuff. Didn't happen. And I for damn sure expected to go D1. Didn't. Now, now rewind one second. So you're talking about these other cats, Castillo and these guys. Same year you're yeah. saying graduated with them? Yes, it's 27. So you're kind of watching them and, you know, you're seeing what's going on with them. Yeah. And, you know, and not to make this negative at, at all, because it's not what this is, but that had to hurt you, right? I mean, that had to tear you up a little bit. Like you're seeing that that go on with them and you're like, wait a second here. You know, I'm right up at this level. Western New York prospects or pro MLB prospects has me here next to him, you know, and for whatever the reasons may have been, call it a bad season, call it politics, call it somebody called Castillo's. Yeah. You know I mean, but what goes through your mind there? I mean, what, were you hurting? Absolutely. I mean, there was times on my senior day, I looked at my parents and I was like, hey, I don't even know if I like want to continue with this. And this makes for a good story, so I'm going to tell it. Yeah. But that's the truth, man. Like, I didn't have any offer. I had one offer out of high school. It was to a D1 Juco in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay. And that's only because my mom, shout out my mother, emailed the coaches in the South because she knew I wanted to go to Florida or sure. Georgia or Louisiana Georgia, yeah. to play ball. Yeah. Yeah. So she would she would go to work and she was a school counselor at Eden and she would email these coaches and say, hey, I have a son. First one she uh, reached out to said, bring him down. Really? Went down there and they gave me a full ride to a Juco down there. So did you go there? I did go there. I okay. did. For one year, I really wanted to play at LSU. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know this part. I didn't know this part. So please tell, yeah, tell me this. Thing. So this is right out of high school. You went down there. Yeah. Right. Went right down to Louisiana and it was a culture shock, man. Yeah. I don't care what level of college baseball you're playing. It's legit. Yeah. It's down legit. There. Yeah. You know, like the, the team I was on, they, they could probably beat many mid-major teams or anything like yep. that. Yeah. And it's a no-name team. I know. People don't understand that. And I, I even tell, you know, my wife, Trish, or, or my family or whoever, as far as opportunities go, you were special. And that's why you were elite in Western New York. You had a natural gift. Bro. Then you take right. your talent. Well, you did. And then you take your talent. And like you just said, because your, 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 humil your humility is what really stands out most. And it, what makes me really kind of dig your, your vibe and your personality. But you go down there. And and you see these guys who play every day, Troy. Man. They, they don't. Yeah. It's it's it doesn't snow there. It, it it does not rain in half the year. They get up and they play catch in the morning every day. You know, and hockey. You ask them what a hockey stick is. They don't know. You know, so they don't know. They didn't. Right. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. You're screwing around with both sports still, and you know, having fun on your on your uh, high school team with cot with hockey. And every yeah. day, those cats down there were at batting practice. Absolutely. So down in Louisiana, it actually didn't go as planned. Um, so this is another cool story. And I'm sorry if I'm getting long winded here. Oh, I, I'm I'm enjoying them. So in the fall, I get down to to that school, and I'm a full ride guy. I'm not paying for anything. Right. So I'm going to be playing. Like that's just how it goes. You, you get a scholarship, yeah. you are going to get more shots. Right. Right. Just like the draft. If you get drafted yeah. higher, you're going to get more money. That's how it goes. Yep. So we do a ranking. Of all the position players that come to the tryout for the JUCO team, okay. there was 120 kids, I remember. Okay. And I was ranked one. Okay. As the best position player on the field in the fall. Okay. Come springtime. Yep. I, I remember, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I was uh, down there and it was like a different, I remember I had some like stomach issues. It was like, it was a new place. A little bit of culture shock, man, in more ways than one, right? Not just the baseball, but kind of being away from home and, yeah. and you know, the, the, whole, thing. the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. I ended up finding myself out of the lineup like that. And I was promoted to bullpen catcher the spring of my freshman year of college. Now, Demoted. the rankings in fall at one, were you still like, nobody played ball over the winter, right? Yeah. Um, are you asking kind of like what changed? Yeah. That I mean, well, yeah. How do you go from one to, you know, being completely sidelined almost like, like almost, uh, yeah. Sounds like the Yankee got, you know, there was some, so you, you got railroaded, man. Yeah. Yeah. What's it? What's his name? Wally Pip. <laughs> well, you got Wally Pip. You got railroaded. Okay. So that fall, 
I had a girlfriend who lived in Florida. Okay. And I went there instead of going home. And I'm not saying that that was the reason that I, I didn't have a good spring. Are you but still with her? No, no. Well, then that it was definitely the reason, but go ahead. Yeah. If you are still with so, her now, then you could never say that. So True. True. <laughs> I, if she was with me right now, I would not be saying that. But I was on a short leash. Everybody was. And I think I had a, it was a really big wake up call to realize, okay, if I make two errors in a game, I'm not playing next game. Right. Because in high school and in travel ball, you're I could make playing. 10 in a game. Yeah. And you're still, I'm good not coming up. That's a lot of pressure, man. It is. You and know. my young, immature self yeah. couldn't handle that. I'll be honest with you. I, yeah. I, I didn't, it was new to me. Were you partying a lot? Um, not necessarily more than anybody else. It wasn't yeah. anything like that. It, so it was wasn't just, like that. It, it's not like anything got out of control with that or anything. No, no, it, it was, it was more me like kind of just not being ready for the moment and not understanding what this is. Now, looking <laughs> back that year is arguably the biggest year for my growth as a person and a player. I mean, to me, outside looking in, it sounds like you were ego tripping a little bit. It sounds like you were, you know, I, I think you were, you can almost ride the wave of being a big deal up here in a sport where there's not a whole lot of big deals, right? There's a yeah. lot of kids. There's a lot of kids in this area that go play OHL, go play juniors. I'm not saying they're, you know, I've interviewed a couple, Joey Muldowney and, uh, yeah, and Quentin Musty just got drafted too by the Sharks, right? Like. Yeah. Patch, Patty Kane, dude. I mean, look at that yeah. example. Second best or maybe arguably the best American-born hockey player ever, right? So there, there is kind of a basis, especially in Western New York and Buffalo, a springboard with hockey. And again, not so much baseball. You have Hollins. You have a handful of guys. I went to school with a buddy, rank it, a few other guys, right? But the Mac brothers and, you know. Yep. In Jonah, obviously, but yep. we're not talking about them. We're talking about you. It sounds to me, and again, this is not no offense. It's just maybe ego tripping a little bit, maybe thinking like, listen, I got this, man. This isn't going to be a big deal for me. And for that sure. stress of one error possibly becoming two, right? And then, yep. knowing, and then knowing you're riding yourself out of the lineup. It's just, it's a very interesting, um, you know, mental concept. I think that a lot yeah. of people would struggle to understand. Um, Absolutely. And like I said, man, you're a pretty strong witted dude. Like I can tell you have your, your stuff together, you know, and you're pretty Dang. thrilled just talking to you. The, the, the thing, and, and again, not to beat a dead horse or make this an, a negative interview. I don't want to bring back negative vibes, no, you're good, dude. I, but you know, I, feeling, feeling that way. And then what goes on at that school, right? Wake up call. Wake might up have been call. the greatest thing to ever, ever happen. Ever. I mean, Right. I'm a believer and everything happens for a reason. Karma. I'm that guy, man. I got tattoos all over me with karma and, and I just really believe it. Then you get back up here, Mercyhurst, you know? Yeah. So actually the year after that, I went oh, to, no, 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 you went to, I, went to Nag I went to Niagara County Community College. Oh, okay. Okay. So Matt Klinger Smith, the coach of that team, uh, yeah. always was watching me play uh, travel ball in the area. So yeah. mind you, I get, done with that season my freshman year and i call him and i'm like okay i have no place to play next year like hey, do you mind if i come to end trip and he was like i can't believe troy banks is on my phone on the phone right now wow. because he thought something of me at that time i did not think of myself yeah yeah and that's just the truth of it yeah. like so i go there and that's where it all changed for some reason i that was it i wasn't gonna mess up again I was not, I, I realized what this was and it was a grown men type thing now. It wasn't like travel ball, like mom's going to buy you Gatorade. It's like, okay, if you right. want this, you got to do it, man. Right, right. I think that's a, such a huge learning experience that I hope, I really hope, um, you know, again, me being involved with coaching and everything with these kids that are 10 years <clears throat> and younger and involved with academy and stuff like that now. I would play this for them. And I would say, guys, I think the key take out of this interview is, quite honestly, start earlier with that mindset. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, you still want to be a kid and you still want to have fun and you can't take that element out of it. But like, after you saying what you just said, you know, had you taken this a little bit more serious, right? Let's be honest. Yeah. From yeah. a year or two back. And again, man, you're in a great spot right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we might be, you know, we might be watching you on Sports Center every day. You know what I mean? Because the talent was certainly there. So yeah, crushed it with Mercyhurst though. Had a had had great success yep. there. Fantastic success. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, 
was there ever any, and again, now you're, I mean, I introduced you as a pro ball player. That's what you're doing. Right. And, and again, we'll yeah. lead back to there's major league baseball. There's Pacific coast league. There's, there's uh Cape Cod league, right? Yep. Just massive. Um, Frontier are, league, pioneer Frontier. league. All yeah. So tell me a little bit of, I mean, for, for again, people who might not know all the different baseball leagues that there is as a pro ball player. Yeah. You know, where are your options? And let me ask you this straight up. Are they sustainable for income yeah. and for living? I mean, that, and that's just straight up. You know what I mean? Can you, yep. can you be an, an adult, a 26 to 29 or 30 year old man and, and, and have a wife and kids if you want to go that yeah. route right, and sustain a living that way? Yeah. So back to the leagues first. Um, there is a bunch of leagues that are more prominent than th than they once were. And the reason for that being is COVID knocked the MLB draft in half and got rid of many major league affiliate teams. So okay. the major league baseball is not picking up the slack as much financially with okay. these teams. Okay. So they're now independent teams that fund the affiliate leagues and all that stuff. So you go to an independent team, you're more in it than ever. It yeah. used to be you're not. Yeah. But now there's less teams in the affiliate ball world. So you have a shot. Okay. Um, but these teams are not funded by major league baseball. They are funded by their city, their fan base, their sales. It's pretty cool, man, to be at these, at these parks and kind of uh, feel what that's like. And, and it's, there's so many small town teams in the country that people may have never heard of, but you right. go to a game and there's 7,000 people loving oh, the team. Were you ever down there? Did you ever get invited to a spring training or anything like to play with an MLB team? Were you down? Did you ever get a shot in, in that regard at all? So, no, uh, not with an MLB team yet. But like I said, I'm still in it. And that's the yeah, yeah. in here. Spring training is kind of winding down now. So sure, sure. the spring trainings for the independent leagues are just now starting up. They are. OK. Mid to late April. OK. So, so season a lot shorter. Do they play half the games or something? Not necessarily half the games. They probably play a hundred. So the plan is to get signed spring training here soon. I've been talking to a few teams, um, and it's it's looking pretty good. Uh, they I, they've seen me. I went to free agent workouts in San Diego, uh, Oakland, California. I was living out in California, so I was able to go okay. out there. Uh, now, how does that their... work, though? Give me a breakdown of of again me even not. This isn't even the fans. This is me. I have no clue. So yeah. with these other leagues, do they have drafts also? Yes. Yes. Okay. There so is a draft that I'm going to. Sorry. Yeah. There's a draft I'm going to for the Frontier League um, on April 24th, I believe, in Washington, Pennsylvania, where the wild things play. And uh, that they're going to, every team has to pick a guy, like has to. So you're going to get 150 guys from all over the country, and then they're going to go into a draft. And then the thing about it is, even if you don't get drafted, you can get signed midseason because it's so cutthroat that they'll be releasing guys two weeks in. So now when you get signed to these teams, they're not paying you nickels, but they're not paying you millions. The Pioneer League in the West Coast is now paying their players $3,000 a month. Okay. So it's not like... And is that kind of a is that kind of a standard of what they're doing in most of them? Like, you know, yeah, you'll see like two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Like yeah. some really good players in these leagues will be making four. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's not like you're dead broke, but if you have a kid and a wife, right. that that's a different story. Right. I don't. Provided yeah. your health is still there and you're training the right way, I know some guys don't, and that's yeah, probably, you know, but yeah, you have to find something that works, like. That's kind of why I'm. I've started my own business. I mean, I, I I'm selling batting gloves now, and I'm I'm promoting players like younger players to colleges and doing that kind of thing. So, because um, real quick, you have is it a baseball school? Is that what you're doing? No, it's called Banks Baseball Co. My logo is a bank, and it's investing yourself is a slogan. It's kind of like okay. a. So it's it's pretty it's pretty cool playing words. That's fresh, um, man, no, I like that. That's that's yeah. real, man. So hold on. So investing in yourself as a player. Um, it almost sounds like borderline agent type thing, right? Or, or yeah, we do camps. Uh, we do a lot of player promotion. We do a lot of teaming up with other um, companies and 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 to do these camps all over the country. And I have found a niche in that. I love working with the youth. Like it's it's a big big thing to me. I don't. I just love it. I'm good with the kids. What are the ages? Oh man, I have six to to seventeen. Seriously. Okay. okay. This was awesome, dude. I really appreciate you, Troy, taking yeah, the time. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.
Yeah, man. We will uh, catch up real soon and have a great evening. You too, buddy. Thanks.